you have to love what you're doing. You just have to, because you're gonna wake up one day and you're gonna say, man, I spent 50 years of my life helping someone else set up their business and reach their goals and their vision. And it's okay if your vision changes over time. It's okay if you decide one day, I don't wanna be an entrepreneur, I wanna be a scientist. Whatever the case may be, as long as you do it. My name is Jacqueline Tacarante, and I'm the owner and founder of JMT Media. I grew up in San Antonio, Texas, and we had a very beautiful small home that my mom took care of, and she made sure that there was breakfast, lunch, and dinner on the table, but I didn't realize how poor we were until I got into my 20s, and then I realized, wow, my mom really stretched as much as she could. We were on welfare, we were on public assistance, and my mother never made us feel any different. The community never made us feel any different. When I started saving up to move to New York almost 10 years ago, I literally just wanted to be with the best of the best marketing and PR people. I had every imaginable, questionable job, selling classified ads, working with restaurant owners to help do their promotions for them, a waitress and a cashier at a local barbecue joint. I would have to clean up the men's urinal. And I remember, being in the bathroom and getting choked up and teary-eyed because I'm thinking, I have my master's, what am I doing cleaning toilets? And it just replayed over and over in my mind when my mother used to tell me, with a little time and resources, you can accomplish anything. So I literally would just swallow the biggest gulp of tears that I had and would just finish cleaning the bathrooms and would go on my day. Whatever I could do to get to New York City, I was gonna do it, and I did it. After paying first, last, and security deposits, I only had $313 left in my bank account. And that was enough for me to figure out what I was gonna accomplish, what I was gonna do, and to get it done. Working in marketing and PR in New York City, it was interesting because you get to see all these beautiful facets of the fashion industry and big brands, but in working with so many agencies, I quickly realized that you have to be passionate about the products and the people that you're working with. I worked for a few years at a major cultural institution. I ended up becoming the director of marketing and PR, this really fancy, snazzy title, but I was literally working 80 hours a week and it got to the point where I thought to myself, I'm not doing this to help my community. I was three months pregnant with my son. I just knew that I couldn't be a good mother and a good marketing person or employee and working 80 hours a week. There wasn't an opportunity for me to grow, so at that point I decided I needed to step back, and I did. I typed up a letter of resignation. I went into the office the next day, knocked on the door, and I said, I'm so sorry, but I have to do this for myself. It was the scariest moment of my life, but it was also the most exhilarating moment. I didn't have a formal business plan put together, but I definitely had close to 20 years of experience under my belt, 1,600 press contacts in my phone, and hundreds and hundreds of colleagues that I had met over the years from networking events and from partnerships. So with a master Rolodex, I was ready to hit the ground running. Everyone has something, and it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be the best graphic designer or the best writer for PR or the best storyteller, but you have to find one thing that you can pull out that separates you. And even if you don't know exactly what that is, start playing around with ideas. I knew going into this that I could bring something different to the table. I knew that I not only had the 20 years experience, but I also had the nonprofit background. My mom used to always say, anything you do in life, make sure you walk with the purpose. My staff and I, we talk about what our purpose is and what our role is. It's not just to help a client. It's, it's not just to help a nonprofit. It's also to be very transparent and authentic. Just write it down. Write down what makes you different. 
because only you can limit yourself. That's it. My company applied for what we call a Minority Women Business Enterprise Certificate from New York City, New York State. My initial application was denied because my birth certificate said that I was Caucasian. So I ended up having to get a DNA test, found out that I was Native American, not even Mexican, that I was raised my entire life. I immediately contacted my mother in Texas and she had no idea. So I ended up calling my grandmother. It was a month right before she passed away. And so I had to have a conversation with her, a very candid and real one of, I would eat that like, did you know that we were Native American? And she paused on the phone and she said, well, yeah, but I didn't want to tell you. And so I asked her why? She said, well, mija, when I was 11 years old, I was raped. So I left the reservation and I hitchhiked with my sister all the way down to Texas so we could work on the fields because we looked Hispanic. Nobody would question us. After finding out, now I realize why it was such a family secret of almost 50 years. So the following month, I booked a flight to Texas. I loaded up my mom, my sister, Julie, and my son, Roman, and we took a road trip to Ponca City, Oklahoma. I wanted to meet my extended family to learn more about our heritage. And it was really difficult. You know, when you think about having a business and having resources and opportunities, and then you go home and you find out that people barely have lights on and barely any running water, it really puts things into perspective and makes you feel that you're um, doing the right thing and you're on track helping people. I started questioning the minority status for what that means in New York City. Native Americans are considered minorities in New York State. It's not the same case for New York City. So we're in the process of filing legislation paperwork. That in itself has opened up a lot of new doors and challenges because as an entrepreneur, you want to grow. And I didn't realize that this was going to be a whole new chapter of growth for me. But it's not just for me, it's for Asian Americans, Native Americans, Portuguese, Italian Americans. It's for my community, my extended community. Even if I don't know the little girl 20 years from now, at least I know that she will be identified correctly. If I had never started my business and gone through the process, I would have never found out what my true heritage was. When you go through your childhood, you see your single mom, you're all getting on the bus together, everybody's carrying the grocery bags. And then as you're an adult now, and now that I'm a mother, and I see other women that are going through the same thing, it's like you just want to encourage other women. And to me, that's success, being able to help other people. So our purpose is really just to follow our due north and to stay focused and walk with the purpose.